are continuing our series in Water Walkers. And so I'm going to get straight into it, and I'm going to be reading from Matthew 14. Uh, if you've got your Bible, if you've got a phone or whatever, and you want to read that along with me, um, please do. I'm actually going to be, as I said a few weeks ago, um, I ha- I've, I'm, I've chosen a, a different version of the Bible again to read from today, just to get you used to it. And today I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, which may be different from some of you. And if you remember that scale I showed a few weeks ago, the Message Bible is the is the most easiest to read um, uh, version that we've, we've got in English today. So let's get straight into this. Just remember, Peter has just seen Jesus walking on the water, hasn't he? He's seen Jesus walking on the water and he's there on the edge of the boat and I call out to Jesus, I want to be with you. If, if, if I can come, tell me to come. And Jesus answers him, come, doesn't he? He says, come. And we're going to continue reading. It says, jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, faint heart, what got into you? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you, God, I ask you that you would continue to meet with us. You'd continue to challenge us uh, this morning. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that, that you would give us a clear focus. God, I pray, Jesus, that like Peter, uh, Peter starts off with eyes focused on you. We would have lives that are focused upon you. And you'd help us to dismiss and to look past all the distractions, the winds and waves of this life. Amen. Amen. So, Peter gets out of the boat, doesn't he? He gets out of the boat, and as we've been talking about over the last few weeks, he jumps out of the boat, and he starts walking on the water. He starts walking towards Jesus. And then, I love this. I love how the, the, the message describes it. It says, it says um, the, the waves churning under his feet. I can't say that word without doing that. I've just noticed. It's churning. You know, it's, but it was such a weird, I mean, how weird would that be? You know, it must be just like being on a boat, I guess, but without, without being on a boat. Um, just like, but you, literally, you, you're there walking and you, you're doing, the ground is just doing this beneath you as he's walking along. And then all of a sudden, as he's walking, eyes fixed on Jesus. I don't know whether it's a big wave, whether it's a big gust of wind, whatever happens. But all of a sudden, he, he, his eyes come off of Jesus and he looks down. He looks away from Jesus. He looks away from his, the goal, where he's trying to get to. And he looks down and he, his t- attention focuses upon the wind and the waves. You see, um, I, I've been, I've been um, if you were here early this morning, you would have heard mum and dad talk about this show that they've just watched, and they've just got me watching it as well, and I've watched a couple of them. It's this nat- Natural Geographic um, program uh, by um, Chris Hemsworth, who's, who's the host, the guy who played Thor, um, and at the end of the first episode, he, he has this challenge where he has to do a skywalk, and basically it looks like the most, te- oh, honestly, probably the only... Thing more terrifying than that is what one of the what a woman does who he meets before that is um, he has to walk along this kind of crane arm, um, probably about half the it, well it probably is about no about, about half the size of this yellow the yellow line gap on off the off the edge of a skyscraper. I know. Now the only thing more scary than that I can think of is this woman who does typewriter walking at insane heights. Um, but um, he, he, and he, well, he does it. He does it, right? And um, he, he's there. And he does it because, he, first off, he's focusing on where he's going. He doesn't look anywhere else he's focusing on. You know, he slowly does it. He focuses on where, he, where he's going. And then all of a sudden, he gets to the end. And he, he says, his commentate, commentary over the top is, I, I was, uh, my relief then went to dread as I realized I was only halfway. I had to turn around and go back. And, and what happens is, is as, he tur- as he goes to turn around, he goes like this. And then he goes, whoa. <laughs> and just like, because there's nothing. You know, you can see the city. You can, it's, it's in Sydney. You can see the, the Harbour Bridge. I mean, it's an amazing view. But, you know, when it's just you 
I mean, he, he has got this kind of rope attached to his belt, which has a line above, but still. Um, and then, but he does, he turns around and he manages to focus again and breathe and, and kind of get himself back where he's going. But, but he, when, he, when he lost focus on where he was actually going, he, he, he got into trouble. And that's what happens to Peter here. He loses focus. He starts focusing on the wind and the waves. He forgets, actually, his goal was to be near Jesus. He forgets that, and so he gets himself into all sorts of trouble. So my question this morning is, what, what, what are you focused on? And almost just as importantly, what might be distracting you from those focuses? You know, what are you, what are you focused on? You know, you know what, what life goals do you have that you want to do? Places you want to be, people, the person you want to be, maybe grades or school you want to go to, job you want to get, um, get married, have kids or whatever, whatever, whatever your goal are. What are your goals? And, and what's stopping you from getting there? Or what's distracting you? Like the wind and the waves, the wind and the waves weren't stopping Peter from getting to Jesus. Okay. You know, if, if he could walk on water, there was nothing that could stop him from getting to Jesus. It was, the, it was his focus coming off Jesus that stopped him. So when we have, we're bombarded daily by things that try to stop us, prevent us from getting to our goal. Now, actually, I'm going to read some of these really briefly, really quickly. And um, let me just say, if inside you feel a bit like, oh, when I say that one, or you feel like you need to justify yourself when I say it, I'm not going to judge you, but it might be the Spirit of God inside you saying, that might be a problem. Okay? Just letting you and God deal with that. Nothing to do with me. I'm just going to say some words. So, the first one is things that might distract us. And actually, what, what we need to remember is these things are good, I'm going to say. These things are good. Um, and actually, so what might be distracting you from God? First thing, entertainment. Entertainment. It's great to be entertained. We love to be entertained. But how often can the pursuit of flicking through TV channels or Netflix or scrolling through our phones distract us from what, is what Jesus really has for us? How about this? Joshua Clark, he said, uh, our lust for comfort is the biggest Theft, thief of life. That, that, so maybe comfort's distracting you. And you may think, well, well it's good to be comfortable. And actually, on this, on this natural degree, or this Chris Hemworth thing, he doesn't actually explicitly say it, but a couple of shows that I've seen, um, and I, I agree with him completely, is that, is that it's good for you to be uncomfortable. Actually, our bodies crave to be, you know, at the right temperature it's cold yeah it's cold isn't it? it's good to be cold actually as long as it doesn't kill you it's good um it's uh he does an ice challenge um uh you know it's good to be actually be uncomfortable it's good to actually put yourself in situations actually where you think actually i'm not sure i like this danger no but just uncomfortable to push in and learn how to deal, and therefore, rather than if you feel scared or if you feel stressed, rather than avoiding those situations, it's actually good to learn how to be in those situations rather than run for them. Um, another one, the promise of tomorrow. I've got time. I've got time to sort myself out with Jesus. I've got time to do that. You know, life's a long time. I'll get to it. Or maybe you're the sort of person who goes, I work best under stress. I work good under pressure. I, I'm all right. You know, I don't need to do it now because if I leave it till the ninth hour, the eleventh hour, I can, I'll, 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 I'm better at doing it. How about perfectionism? Well, I really want to do this. I really want to be there, but I'm not perfect, and therefore, if I'm not perfect, I don't think I can do it. You know, again, with the kind of, as we're talking about spiritual gifts and growing in spiritual gifts, um, our first analogy that we used was, was, a, was of a toddler walking. You know, in, in Jonah, if, if he was to, you know, he pulls himself up, he starts, he starts to, to let go of the, the sofas or whatever he's grabbing hold of, and then he falls over. You don't go, huh, you can, what are you even trying to do walking? No, no, you go, well done, well done. He does two steps. You do well done, well done. That's how we, what we do, don't we? 
And the same thing is, but the thing is, when we get to adults, we think like, well, I need to be able to do it perfectly or not at all. No, no. Actually, sometimes our pursuit of pe- perfection can stop us from doing what we've been called to do, can prevent us from getting there. Maybe it's regret or past hurt. Sometimes regret or past hurt can be a great motivator. Like I was sharing the other week about, um, about how I went into that shop and I felt God tell me to, to pray for this guy behind the counter. And I said no, and I walked away. And I, I left that going, oh, I really want to go back now. I'm going to go back. Next time I go there, I'm going to pray for him. Because I was like, oh, I knew that God had asked me to do it. So next time I went there, I went and I prayed for him. But, it can be, but also it can be a thing of actually, oh, I've been hurt before. Or oh, I, d- I don't like being putting myself in that situation. So I'm not going to do that. Maybe it's, 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 it's that you want people to like you. There's nothing wrong with having a massive following on social media, but sometimes to get where God wants us to be, we need to say things that aren't that popular or do things that the world doesn't like. And if, if our pursuit of fame or likes or to do something that's trending can get in the way of that. Like I said, none of these things are bad and in and of themselves, but they can sometimes distract us from what God has for us. Um, this guy called Stephen had this, made, said, made this quote when talking about how to, how, to, how to remain focused. He came up with this, he's, he's coined, he's, he's the person who's meant to come up with this phrase of how to keep focused. And his advice on how to keep focused is you must keep the main thing, the main thing. You must keep the main thing. You must remember what the, what to keep the main, how to keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. That's what he said. Now, this guy, I mean, he's written books on how to be a successful businessman, how to be successful in life, okay, um, which, which is, is really good, good advice, okay. Um, his thoughts on Jesus, not so good, okay. Ignore that. Um, uh, he's a Mormon and has some really crazy ideas on who Jesus is. But other than that, his, 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 we, we can take stuff from the world. And actually, some of the things that he says about remaining focused, we, we can use. Actually, one thing he says about remaining focused, he says, imagine yourself where you want to be. Imagine yourself where you want to be. So, you know, um, if, if, you want to, if, if you want to have a certain type of job, If you want to have a certain type of career, if you want to be in a certain place, if you can imagine yourself there, then he says you're partway there. If you can't imagine yourself doing it, then you need to get over your own mind first. You need to imagine yourself there. And then he says, he he says, he says about speaking things over yourself, like telling yourself, okay, um, I can, I can do it. I can, you know, I can pass my exams. I can do this job, rather than telling yourself, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And actually, that doesn't, he, he says, it, 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 this doesn't make it happen. So if you were to say, I'm going to be, I'm going to be rich and famous, I'm going to be rich and famous, and you say that every morning to yourself, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's not like a magic spell, okay? It's not, it's not going to, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But what it does do is if you say over yourself certain things, then it changes the way that you make millions of decisions that you make every day. So th- this, this one, for example, okay? Um, I remember when, when I first got ill, um, uh, I, I basically, I didn't speak, I didn't declare it much, but I'd, I'd speak it to myself. I'd say, you are not a victim. You're not a victim. And actually, it sounds, it may, may sound, sound like crazy, sort of, of course, or whatever, but actually, um, if you read John, John 5, uh, G- Jesus meets this guy who's by some water, and the story goes that if, when this water ripples, that the first person in the water gets healed. They believe that an angel came down, and it touched its wings on the water, and when it rippled, if you were the first one in the water, you would get healed. And so he's there, sat by this, waiting for it to ripple. And Jesus comes up to him and says, do you want to be healed? And you think, well, duh, Jesus. He's there. He's there in the waiting room. He's there in the doctor's surgery. He's there at the clinic. Of course he wants to get healed. Well, actually, the guy doesn't say he wants to get healed. He 
doesn't actually say yes. And uh, Jesus heals him anyway in his mercy. But what I found is actually there's, there's a lot of people who are sick, sadly, who that becomes their identity. I am sick. And especially if you're chronically ill, it can become actually I've been sick for so long, I don't know how to live well. And that may not be for you, but there may be other things in your life. You just think, you think you've, spoken tr- you've spoken false truths over yourself. Because actually, to, to, to say, to declare over myself, I'm not a victim. Yeah, I know God is sovereign. God is in, in charge. But by me saying I'm not a victim to my, to my illness, what that does do, it means, that, it means that decisions I make are affected. So therefore, I go and seek help. If there's someone who can help, help who, who might be able to help improve, improve my health better, I'll go and speak to them. I'll gain wisdom. If someone says, can I pray for you? I say yes, rather than, no, what's the point? I'm a sick person. No, I say yes. And even if it's, even if it's 99 times, I'll say yes, because who knows? That 100th time might be the time when I get healed. It changes, it changes the way that, that you, you approach situations. You see, God has a plan. God has a plan for every single one of you. You see, the, the, the Bible says that, that you, the church, get your head around this, okay? Because these are one, this is one of the verses we read and we don't really always believe. It, it, the Bible says that we, the church, will do greater things than Jesus did. I mean, if you've read the Gospels, Jesus did some impressive stuff. He healed people. He did, he, 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 he raised people from the dead. He made bread last to feed thousands of people. And he says, you, the church, will do greater things. You see, he has, he has great plans for you. He has amazing things planned for you. you know, we, as we were seeing this morning, and nothing is impossible for him. You know, remember, he, he, does, he can do greater things through his church, not because we're impressive, not because we're good, not because we're, there's something special about us. It's because he loves us and he chooses to work through us. You see, you see um, it, 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 and so uh, as Stephen says, you know, his plan his fo- is, to fo- is for us to focus on our goals. And for us, we can take that up for us to focus on and keep focusing on Jesus. And imagine us being at the summit with Jesus, being where Jesus wants us to be. See, I, I, as, as, as I read the Bible, as I read like books of Acts, as I read um, the, the epistles, as you read the Old Testament, you, you see actually that, that the Christian life isn't boring and mundane. One of the reasons why I want to share, to share and I want more people to share, no matter how small you think, feel it is, is so that we all kind of get inspired and actually feel like God can work through me as well. Because actually, I believe as I read the Bible that God wants to heal people. God wants to, see, God wants to save people. So therefore, I've been waking up the last, last few, few months saying, um, saying, God, I believe you can use me to heal someone today. I believe you can use me to heal someone today. So... That changes the way I act. So therefore, I don't sit in my house going, God, I believe you can heal me. You can send one to heal me somewhere. Because you know, really, the only chance I'm ever going to get is when the Amazon delivery driver knocks on the door. But usually, they're so quick because they've got so little time that you can't even speak to them. But, but so that means that so when, when I go into shops, I'm asking God, is there anyone here that you want me to speak to? You know, most of the time, he says yes, and I say, I don't want to do that. That's just being real. But actually, sometimes, and I'm getting better at it, I'll go, I'll start talking to them. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how blessed people are to know that you want to pray for them, whether they believe in God or not. And you can do the same. You can do the same. So Peter, he's on the water. You know, we've been here. He's focused on Jesus. But he loses focus, doesn't he? He loses focus. And we can lose focus so easily, can't we? We can be going so well. You, you can leave here after having a great time of worship, having to, after listening to me th- this morning, and leave here and go off home and be kind of pumped up and be like, God can use me, yes. And then by 10 o'clock this evening, as you, you feel like, oh, I've been distracted already. I've been distracted already. It happens so easily. So how do, we, how do we take control of our eyes? How do we make sure that we focus on the right things? 
Well, Paul says this into the Philippians. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is, an, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You see, it, what he's saying is, is to control our eyes, we need to renew our thinking. We need to renew our thinking, which means we need to take hold of what we're thinking about. And so like, like we've said, you know, we can, we can be, we're saved in an instant. Chains are broken in an instant. But it takes a lifetime of walking and taking hold of old thoughts and walking in the light of our salvation. You see, by letting Jesus show us who we are. You see, it wasn't actually, you know, this, this idea that, this, that, that Stephen has about speaking stuff into being, speaking your future into being, it wasn't his idea originally. If you read the Bible, you read the story of Gideon. You've got this coward, terrified of the Midianites, basic in a hole, trying to do, I mean, this is an impossible job. He's trying to thresh wheat, which is to throw it up in the air so the wind blows through it and blows the light stuff away. It, he's in a hole doing it, where you know, underground, basically, trying to do it, because he's so scared. And this angel appears to him. God appears to uh, and, 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 and he probably peed himself a bit. He was so scared. You know, and he, 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 the, and the, the, to, the, to this guy who's cowering, he declares, arise, mighty warrior. Arise. There's nothing mighty about Gideon. But God speaks it into being. God comes to this guy named Abram in the Middle East. This old guy who's never had a single child. And he says, no, I'm changing your name from Abram to father of a multitude. You're going to be called Abraham. Jesus Think Jesus at his baptism. He's not preached a single sermon. He's not healed a certain person. He's a single person. He's not gone to the cross. And God comes down and he says, this is my son who I am well pleased. And he does that for us. He does that, that for you. You see, God, God loves to speak things into being. What I've done is I've, I've handed out some... some um, some um, little affirmations, and I was um, going to, but we've we've started late. I was going to ask a few of you just to read them out, but just just think, just just look at look at those. I'm going to email out this week um, the, the the full list of twenty that I've done, which is just just affirmations that God declares over you. And I've just I've just then I put like a bullet point underneath the verse which declares those truths. So so just picking some. Uh, it's Ephesians 2.10 2, says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So therefore we can declare over self, God has a purpose for me. God has a purpose for me. He has predestined me to do good works for him. Psalm 118 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Does someone get bingo? <laughs> so, so therefore, we can say, actually, whatever this day brings, God has given this day as a gift. I am going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in this day. Okay. Um, let's, let's pick another one. Um, for uh, let's go um, Philippians one that says for to me living means for, for to me living means living for Christ so therefore we can we can then declare ourselves whatever this day has whatever I'm going to do I'm going to do it for Christ I'm going to ride the train for Christ I'm going to do my job for Christ I'm going to look after my kids. For Christ, and there's there's so many more. I encourage you read through these things, and and you may you may have never had had anything like this spoken over to, over you before. But let me encourage you: if you've had someone bring a word over you, if you've had someone bring a Bible verse over you, don't just say, "Oh, that's nice," and put it in a drawer and forget about it. Declare it over yourself. Declare it over yourself, because there are so many good things that God has to say over us. And let me just say this, okay? Remember, Peter 
was focused on Jesus, wasn't he? Okay, Peter didn't wake up that morning and go, I'm going to walk on water today. I'm going to walk on water today. I'm going to walk on water today. And if I say it enough, I'm going to walk on water. No, he woke up going, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? See, Peter wanted to be with Jesus. That was his focus. That was his goal. He wanted to be with Jesus. And so he comes and he says, Jesus, I want to be with you. And Jesus says, well, that means you're going to have to walk on the water. And so Peter's, Peter's like, okay, if to be with Jesus means walking on the water, I'm going to be the best water walker that ever there was. You see, Jesus may not ask you to walk on water. As far as I know, he's never asked anyone else to do that. I'd love to do it, but he's never, he's never asked me to do it. I've tried. Honestly, I've been to the beach, and I've always gone straight to the bottom of the sand. Um, uh, but he may, there may be other things. Jesus, wake up. Jesus, I want to be close to you. Okay, pray for that friend. Jesus, I want to be close to you. Okay, go, in, go, go and speak to that person. Jesus, I want to be close to you. Okay, I want you to declare how good I am in front of everyone at church. Jesus, I want to be close to you, dot, dot, dot. See, the, 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 the cry is, the goal is, Jesus, I want to be close to you. Then Jesus defines what that looks like in that instance. And for each one of us, that could look like praying for a sick person. That could like, look like sharing your faith with someone. You see, Jesus tells us what we are to focus. What Jesus tells us to focus on Him, and then He shapes what that looks like. And what, how I just want to quickly end in this, mor- this morning is to say, actually, what does that look like? What does it look like for us as a church to be focused on Jesus? What has Jesus asked us to do? He asked Peter to walk on water. What has He asked us to do? And so, firstly, He's asked us to focus on His Word. He's asked us to focus on, and that means that we at the front, those who preach, those who teach, we get into his word. We trawl through it. We we make sure that what we're bringing is true and good. When we make decisions, when we're deciding, what do we do? You know, we we want to um we want to want to be able to give to to street life over Christmas. Okay, we we look at and go actually God's hearts for the poor. It's in scripture. We know that. So therefore, we, we want to do that. And this is one way we can, this is another way we can do that. You know, but that also means that actually, that if you're a Christian, as part of this church, you don't just, you don't just sit there and go, well, Ben knows the Bible. Julian knows the Bible. That's okay. No, no. You go, actually, Jesus has called me to get into his words, to understand it better. To ask questions. Let me say, there are no, if they are asked sincerely, sincerely yeah, um, there's no stupid questions. There's no stupid questions. The, the enemy will come and say, you can't ask that. You can't ask that. They'll think you're stupid. They'll think you're an idiot if you ask a question like that. No, no. I'd much rather you ask a question which you feel like you're going to be an idiot rather than you bottle it up and have lots of questions which you just go, uh, I can't know those things. It's not for me to know. No, no. God wants you. You, you. you can never, never exhaust his word. Every week I'm learning more and more stuff about God through his words. And so, and, and if we're speaking over ourselves, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough. It, that's for other people to do. Well, guess what? You're probably not going to press in. You're going to be distracted. The wind and the waves are distracting you from heading to Jesus. But if you're declaring, if you're saying over yourself, actually, do you know what? This is a hard book, but I have the Holy Spirit in me who makes the mysteries of God known. And, 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 and reading it with, on my own with God and in a group, I can get to know God better. Then you will. You will. Secondly, God has asked us to focus on his presence. This is why we spend such a massive time in, on our Sunday mornings gathered together, worshipping him. And not just singing songs, but we sing songs that point to Jesus. We, and we, we want to experience his presence. That's why, why, why we encourage you to, to pray, to, to sing in spiritual languages, to, to, if you feel like God's speaking to you, to, to pray it out, to bring it. Because we want to encounter Jesus, we want to encounter his presence 
And so, and like I said, that's, that's not just for the, for the few. That's not just for the worship band. That's not just for, for, for those who, who, do it, who do it every week. If you're, if you're a Christian, if you're part of this church, that's for you as well. That's for you as well to, 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 to seek God's presence quietly on your own. To, to be brave and think, actually, I want to pray out on a Sunday. I want to bring something. Come prepared. It's no less spiritual. If you come prepared with a Bible verse to bring, brilliant. It's no less spiritual than, than me right now thinking, oh, I've got a Bible verse to share. Actually, God, God works through time and history. He can use you this morning through something that happened on Tuesday. Okay? So, and, but if you're thinking, I can't do that. God, God, yeah, God, I believe God can speak to, speak to us, but he speaks to the person next to me. He don't, never speaks to me. I don't want to ask him to fill me with the Spirit because what if he doesn't? Well, if you don't ask, he's, he's, you're not going to get. But if you're, if you're there, if you have the, if you have this, if you have, if you have the eyes focused on Jesus, Jesus, who says, who says, who, who, who freely gives the Holy Spirit, then you're gonna, you, you, you're going to, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. It's Jesus who says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And let me say, if you don't feel like you've received the power of the Holy Spirit, you just need to ask him. You just need to ask him and he will fill you. Thirdly, we're a church that we've been, we've been called to focus on, hi- on, sharing, on, sorry, on sharing the gospel. I'll show it just as Shagun did this week. Just sharing the gospel with someone. You see, and that, that, means that, we, that means that as a church, as a leadership, that we, we want to make examples and say, you know, here's, here's people who are doing that, encourage you. That we want to, we're going to share the gospel on, on key Sundays, like the, the carol service. I'm going to preach a short gospel message. And you know what? I'd love to share the, I'd love to preach gospel message to non-Christians. I'll preach it to you guys, but I'd really love to preach it to non-Christians. So if you've got someone, invite them, okay? I'd love, you know, and that, that's, that's part of it. If you're, if you're a Christian, if you're part of this church, what well, that means is not that, that, that I can't do it. it. It means that you say, actually, well, I may not be a Billy Graham. I may not be able to preach at the front of church, but actually, can you make friends? Can you invite Maybe, maybe, maybe I was speaking to Steve, who came, Steve Hurd, who came um, earlier on the, um, this year, and he said, he said, I don't, I can't make friends. I'm useless at making friends, but I can argue with people. So if you get someone who doesn't believe in Jesus, I can, I, 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 but they want an argument, I can argue with them. I can, I, I know. So he's like, he's, he's just like, there's different, he, and he's very quite comfortable with the fact that there's different types of Christians. There's different types of ways of sharing your faith. Sometimes that's that's through friendship. Sometimes that's inviting them so someone else can share their faith with them. Sometimes that's just living alongside and them seeing as as with Shagun. In a in a couple of hours, there's something different about you. You know, but if you're there going, if you're there looking at the wind and the waves, you're thinking. God couldn't use me. God won't use me. Why would God want to use, speak through me? But if you're looking, focused on Jesus, you see things differently. You see that God says he wants to extend his kingdom. His kingdom will rule. His kingdom will reign over the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. And he says he will do it through you, his church. And, and if you don't believe it, look, look at the first people he chose. They weren't impressive. They really weren't impressive. It says in the scriptures, doesn't it? He chose the foolish things. He's talking about us. To shame the wise. To shame the world. Number four, we've been fo- we're a church that Jesus asked us to focus on serving each other. Using our gifts and talents. And if you're here early on a Sunday, you'll know that every week, those of, us, those of us who lead are here every week, serving, laying out stuff, putting stuff out. But that's also opening, opening our homes. Open your home. And if you're part of this church, that means, you know, I've got, we, we, I've put, put up the, the rotor for 
for, for next term? Why not serve? If you're not serving already, why not serve? It doesn't matter if you feel particularly called to washing up cups at the end. Actually, if you have two hands and you can wash, great. I mean, if you're prone to dropping things, probably don't. But, you know, what, what, yeah, there's other things. There's, there, there's, there's welcoming people. Uh, you know, it's for, for, for someone, for some people, they, it's, it's a massive thing coming to a like this on their own. And if there's a smiling face at the front door saying, come on in. I'll be your friend. It just makes it so much easier. See, that's what that's what it means. But if you're if you're there thinking, well, no one no one wants to. If no one wants me, I've got nothing to offer. I I, I don't. I have. I have very little money. I have very little talents. What can I give? Well, the wind and waves are getting in your way, and you're say, you're you're excluding yourself, and you probably won't experience Jesus in that way. But if you're saying, do you know what? Yeah, I don't have an awful lot. But I know a Jesus who can make a couple of loaves of bread feed, feed thousands of people. I know a God who can make water come from a rock. Actually, he can use whatever little talents, whatever little money I have to do big, big things, more than I can possibly imagine. Then guess what? You're probably going to experience God in that way. You're not going to be the, 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 the servant who hides his talent in the ground. You're going to be the servant who uses his talent and gets double what God first gave him. And finally, we believe that God's called us to focus on authentic community, being real with one another. And that means, again, that from the front, we try to be real. We don't try and post this, 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 this pretend fake Christianity where, where we're perfect. But actually, we try and create an atmosphere where people can be real, where people can share. That's why we, 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 have, we have loads of time devoted to drinking tea and coffee. You know, we drink tea and coffee at, at the beginning. And, and let me say, if we drink tea and coffee at the beginning. Don't feel, because I've had people say this, not here, but I've had people say this in the past, you know, you, you don't start till, you don't start till quarter to 11, so therefore that I don't come till quarter to 11. No, 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 no. We, we start a lot earlier. Actually, we start, really, as, as, soon, as, you, as soon as I open the or maybe early if you want, but as soon as, as soon as those keys open that door, we're, we're starting. And then for those of you who come early and help, we're, we're, we have, we're doing community together. We're brothers and sisters serving one another. We're, we're, making, we're finding out he, how each other's doing. You know, We're checking up on each other. How, how, how have you been? How are you doing? And we're making time for those, those instances where real friendships can be formed. That's why we break in the middle even when worship runs long like it did wonderfully today, because we want, so even if you come late and you have to leave early, there's still time to, to commune, commune with everyone. So if, if this is your church, you know, if, you, if you're a Christian, I encourage you, be part of that. Take responsibility for that. You know, come to home group. You know, home group was, was wonderful this week. I couldn't get there because I wasn't feeling very well, but I was, I was gutted I couldn't because actually it, it, it actually... There was the, the, it was a time where, where actually a, a couple shared some real hard stuff that they were going through. And that was real friendship, real community, to be able to listen to what they're going through, but also be able to say, we're praying for you. We're with you. And if they were on their own, they wouldn't get that. And actually, for us who weren't there, we missed out on that rawness. I encourage you, take responsibility, be, come to home group. We're, we're not going to, we're not going to have a, 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 a standard service on Christmas day and New Year's day. So therefore, come next week, maybe thinking I'm going to have people around my house. Who wants to come around my house on the 29th or who wants to come around my house on the 30th? Do that. Connect with people, connect with people, connect with everyone Connect with a few people, but connect with people. You see, but if we're looking at the wind and waves and we're thinking these lies of, well, no one really wants to know me. Why would anyone want to, 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 to be with me? Then we don't do it. But if we're thinking, these are my brothers and sisters who God has given me, who God has blessed me with, then we do. We do that. See, this is what sort of church that God has called us to do, what Jesus focused us to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray now. And I want us to, us to, us to stand because uh, 
I believe that many of us are speaking lies over us. Rather than speaking what God wants for us, we're, we're speaking things like, God can't use me. I have nothing to say. No one wants to be close to me. No one wants to know the real me. I'll always be like this. And God wants to say, no, take your eyes off the wind and waves and focus upon me. So Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that if there's anyone here who, is, who, is, who has lies over them, that they are, declaring, they are declaring these things or other things about themselves. Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that the wind and the waves in their life would not distract them from you. God, when we focus on you, our whole life perspective changes. God, you say that we are loved. You say that we are adored. You say that, that we are the apple of your eye. You say, you tell each one of us that we can go that we can share your word, that we can see the lost saved, see people baptized. God, that's for each one of us. You say that every single one of us can, can move in the spirit, can prophesy, can speak in tongues. God, and we, we say, look, God, where, where that may be not us at the moment, where we're telling ourselves that's not for us. God, I pray that you break those lies upon every single one of us. Come, Lord Jesus, even now, today, this week, do it, Lord God. May we hear more and more testimonies as we end this year and we go into next year of how you have used us, how, how stories that start off with, I've never done this, but God did this through me. God, I ask for more of them. Amen. Amen.